Hi everyone, Carmen Broxma here with Choose Joy with Carmen. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Arvada, Colorado and back again for another episode of my Joy Monday. However, last week I did mention that my Joy Mondays are going to be hijacked by a little different take because I'm getting ready for a craft fair and I really need to make that my primary focus. So the projects that I will be showing you over the next several weeks are going to be uh, things that I'm going to be making for the craft fair. So chances are I'm going to be using products from Stampin' Up! that are retired or no longer available. And, you know, I'm sorry about that, but I'm trying to focus on my craft fair and what I'm trying to get accomplished. But the projects I do show can be used with any of your projects. Uh, products if you have them and can be adjusted accordingly. Now this week I wanted to work on another hand sanitizer for this one right here and as I talked about last week I tried to design my container to kind of match the hand sanitizer that's going inside. So when I first did this I decided I wanted to use this designer paper pack which is called come together because it had some colors in here that I thought would go nicely with this hand sanitizer so I originally thought oh maybe I could use this little treat box for this project because then that would be so much easier I mean because this is a, a treat box that you don't use any glue really to adhere together so I decided to try to make one and so I went with this and I was using the back of this paper here because I thought well you know I wasn't sure that because you know I wasn't I liked this side but I wasn't really sure if that wanted to be my primary so I decided to use the back side and then just kind of use the extra pieces that were left over to decorate it but when I went to go put this in there um, it's really 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 snug and it kind of bulges on the side and um, I would have you know I can't even get the the uh, the ribbon would have to go over and around and it, it just wasn't see how it's bulging there because it's just too fat for this container so I says well we're gonna scrap that idea and we're gonna move on to something else so let's put that aside and I'll kind of show you what I decided to go with so we're gonna be making um, a box and the pieces and let me show you so I'm going to be using crumb cake cardstock and I'm going to be using this designer series paper that is part of the Gilded Autumn specialty designer series paper. And I'm using, so let's take a look at our hand sanitizer and you can see why I decided to do this. So I wasn't going to do much coloring on the pumpkin because the pumpkins in here are kind of white and gray, but I kind of wanted to match this paper. So I took, let's see, let's pull out all the stamp sets that I used. I took the pumpkin out of the gather together and I stamped it on um, very vanilla with the... Sahara sand and then I took um, my crumb cake marker and I kind of just made kind of outlined it a little and just kind of did one little line through there and colored the the stem up here just to give it a little more look and then I took let's see well what else was in this one um, so I used the die to die cut that out out of here and I think that was all I used. Let me open it. Oh, no, no, no. 
I used this small die leaf that was in here as well. And I was trying to match that leaf on the hand sanitizer. So I die cut it out with an old retired color called terracotta tile. But then I took a sponge dauber with Cajun Craze and I went and added some color over that a little bit and around the edges to give it, I didn't want it because this is the terracotta tile and you'll see the difference. See, I wanted a little bit more fallish look than just straight up this color. So that's what I did for that. Then I took this image here from the Fall Fest and I stamped it with Calypso Coral and I die cut it out and again I was trying to focus on that little you know sprig of leaves there and then this has some mushrooms in it so I found mushrooms in the dyes from the kindest gnomes so I went ahead and used the smaller ones of the, mu the mushroom head and the stem. And I die cut them out and I die cut the top part with um, Sahara Sand. And then I took the Sahara Sand Stampin' Right marker and in the little indentions I kind of just added a little extra of that in there to give it a little more dimension. Hopefully you can see that. And then I just glued the crumb cake uh, bottom onto the back of that. And then I used for my sentiment, and I used early espresso ink, and I took the sentiment from the a corny thank you, and I did the grateful for you. So basically, those are the pieces that we're going to be using today. So... I will have all the dimensions on my blog on the pieces here, but basically um, this one is scored on all four sides equally, and I think it was scored at an inch, yeah, an inch on all four sides. Then we're going to go ahead and take our bone folder, and we're going to burnish all the edges. This is going to be our box, our bottom of our box. And we're going to come in with our paper snips. And we're going to do what we do with most boxes is we're going to cut up on that score line on that corner to that first score line. And then we're going to kind of just miter, do some miter cuts on each of the corners. And then that'll help put our box together. So I'm going to continue to do that. Okay, so there is our box, the bottom of the box when it's been mitered. So now I'm just going to take some liquid glue and we're only going to do this to one side right now. So I'm going to just add some liquid glue to these tabs and then I'm going to go ahead and push that in and line up the edges like that and that's going to be kind of hold it there a minute till the glue kind of sets up take the other side and do the same thing lining up that cut edge with the scored edge holding that there as well okay and we're not going to do the other side yet because we have to do something with it we've got to make our hinged lid so we're going to take now this gets a little um there's really not a direction on this paper there might be on the inside if you, you know, if you want your lid to have this, these going in a certain way. But as far as the outside, if you have a paper that has a direction, then my suggestion would be to find 
the direction that you're going to want on your box when you're looking at it. And once you decide the direction, so let's say I want my direction to be this way, then I'm going to focus on this part over back here to be my hinge. So the first thing that I need to do, I'm going to turn that around, I'm going to work on the hinge part of the lid. And I'm going to go ahead and from the side on that score line, cut in and then add an angle, cut up and cut that whole corner off. And we're going to do the same to the other side. And then we'll go ahead and also do a little miter cut on that as well. Okay, then on this side, we're just going to do what we did on the bottom of the box. And we're just going to cut up on that score line to the next score line. And this is also scored at an inch all the way around. And then we're going to do some miter cutting as well on both of those edges. And then we're going to bring in our... Um, well, you could do it one of several ways, but I'm going to do it with my my cutting uh, scoring, my you know, my paper trimmer. That's what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and bring that in because what we need to do is we need to angle cut this. So let me grab my paper trimmer from over here a little far out of my reach. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is the way I look at it is this part down here I want to be the widest. So I'm going to have to cut in an angle from this corner to that corner and that's going to be my angle right there. And I noticed on a few of the boxes that I was doing it from this side but I don't like that because you know sometimes your cutting kind of leaves that little edge so I decided to do it from this side. So you can either do it this way or you can just draw a line and if you want to, if you're more comfortable doing it that way, but I like doing it this way. So I'm going to fold this flap under and since I want this to be my widest down here, I'm going to go ahead and put that crease where the score line is right there right in that little um, where, where I know it's going to cut. And then again, try to line up where it's going to be the score line up here and put it in that little place there that it's going to cut. So you got to kind of have to finagle until you get both ends where they're going to be, where they cut. And then you're going to bring your cutting tool and then you're just going to cut. And the reason why I like to fold that part under is that I can kind of, it helps me see where I'm going to put that in there. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this. Kind of looks like a paper airplane, doesn't it? I found this uh, box on the Paper Pixie site and I love it. So now what we're going to do is we need to put that, make our hinge on our box. So what we're going to do is we're going to put adhesive here and then what we're going to do is we're going to line it up with the edge here. But here's the thing is you also got to make sure that it's not going to interfere with where you scored on the inside. So what I like to do, and she didn't do this, but it just makes it easier for me, is I'm just going to cut off a little bit of that edge right there, because then that way I don't have to worry about it running into there, and I could just focus on the top edge. So I'm going to add a little bit of liquid adhesive here, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn this so that this edge right here is going to line up with this edge right here. 
So I'm going to place that inside my box and I'm going to go ahead and work on trying to line up that crease line of the designer paper with the edge of that box there. So I have that all lined up there. Then that way it, it's just easier for me to focus on that and not have to worry about is this edge going to be running into that score line inside the box. So that's why I cut off that little bit. So now we can go ahead and add adhesive to these tabs here and continue putting our box together. Again, let's just add that there and then line up the edges there. And then I'll hold that for a minute and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold that in like that and add my adhesive this way. That's the only way I could find to do it easier for me than to um, have it on the outside and then try to get it pushed back in, you know, to put here. So I just put some adhesive there and now it's easier for me to just fold that in and line up that edge right there. And then that'll be our hinge for our lid. And then we just continue to do the same thing with the other two edges. And then our box lid will be done. Okay, so there it is. There's the inside of our box and the hinge and there's the lid. And I like that it has that diagonal cut there. I think that is just so cute for this box. So now it's just a matter of adhering our elements that we've stamped, cut out, sponged, and all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and grab a few things and we'll come back and finish that up. Okay, I had to grab some more Stampin' Dimensionals. So the first thing that I did is I took my sponge leaf and I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. Put a little bit of liquid glue on the back. And then I'm going to adhere that kind of off to the corner. Something like that. And then, and what you could do is um, put your hand sanitizer inside so when you push down there might be a little bit of more leverage in there. So there's that and then I'm going to take my pumpkin and I'm going to get it ready and I'm going to also get my mushroom ready because I want to stick the mushroom uh, stem right underneath this as well. So let me just add a little bit of glue to both of them. And then that way I can be ready to put them down at the same time. So, oops, just put a little bit of glue on the back of both of them. And then I'm going to pick up my mushroom and get it ready. And then, well, let me put that down because I can't pick them both up at the same time. Me turn over my pumpkin and I'm going to kind of put that down here at the bottom and I'm not going to push it all the way down yet because I want that stem of the pumpkin to cover the stem of that leaf and now I'll pick up my mushroom and I'm going to angle it off right underneath that pumpkin a little off to the side like that. And then I've already have Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of my sentiment and my die cut leaves here. And this I used um, this punch right here to punch out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sentiment down first. So let me pull off the release backing of the 
Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to kind of put it down here at the bottom toward, you know, like toward the bottom of that pumpkin like that. And then I'm going to take the release paper off my leaves here. And then I'm going to just put the stem just a little bit underneath there and off to the side. And there we go. We have a decorated box that has a lot of the elements that's on the hand sanitizer that's on the inside. And I think I did the best I could to match the colors as closely as possible. So I really like that. So there is another hand sanitizer holder and I love this box. So I've already done all my other ones. So here they all are. Aren't they just so cute? I just love them. So I'll have 10 of these to sell at the craft fair that's coming up in October. So there they all are. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all who follow me on a regular basis. If you're new to my channel um, and you would like to see more of what I have to show, subscribing to my channel. And if you want to be notified, you can click on that bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. Alrighty, so my next video is going to be uh, what I did for Craft Roulette this last week. And I will be uploading that hopefully here soon as well. Okay, you all have a great week and we will see you again next Monday when I have another episode on my uh, Mojoy Monday. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.